Hi everyone, welcome to day four of the Heal Your Migraines video series. I hope you are enjoying it so far and just remember to start with the uh, lymphatic drainage routine and then as you keep doing this, each, each time you go through a round of the series, it's going to get better and better and so the more consistent you are that's really that's really where you have the healing and also you're going to start feeling what your body is actually asking you to do so you might need to add more pressure you might need to add less pressure so it's just it's all experimentation and everybody is different so let's go ahead and just get into it so we're going to start with the neurovascular release that we've done before um i love neurovascular releases i always get a really good I can always feel the release really good. So we can find this little hole right here, okay? So if you can't find it, you can kind of like bring your shoulder forward to find the hole, but then put it back. And then where the trap meets the neck, we're just gonna do that little swap and tilt your body and tilt your head and breathe. On your exhale, go ahead and bring your head straight, but keep the body tilted. And relax. Other side, so go ahead and find the hole. And then swap. Tilt your body, tilt your head. Breathe. more and on the next one bring the head straight and body's tilted and relax okay and now we're going to I can't remember if we've done this yet or not but we're going to reach our arms to the side I'm doing like this on both sides and then I'm bringing my arms above my head not back here not up here but kind of in the middle and then going to lift the shoulders and really open up the brachial plexus area which is where your your armpits are and just breathe and imagine that your fingers are pulling your elbows to the sky and uh, your chin is to your chest. And just make sure that you're in like a neutral position. You don't want to be doing this or this. Keep your pelvis neutral in case keep everything straight. <sighs> Inhale. Keep lifting your elbows towards the ceiling. Now we're going to open. Just reach, reach, reach. Have your fingertips reaching for like the sky and just really open up. Okay, and now I'm going to stretch the tissue so we compressed it so we can stretch it and so pretend like do like a pretension right here see like this and then I'm gonna take my hand and get really deep into the tissue and go all the way up to the jawline you can add vibration hmm. you can kind of lean into your hand a bit to help get deeper You want to go really, really slow. And as you continue to do more rounds of the video series, you'll notice that your uh, fascia lets you go deeper. And so you may not feel like you're able to go very deep right now, and if you can't go deep, that means you need to go slower. 
but as you continue opening up your body, you can go deeper, easier. vibration on the areas where it's like stuck okay good and now we're going to use our first knuckles and we're going to open up the chest and as we do this we're gonna just lift and lower our arm well we're gonna lift it as we get over to the deltoid so start lower over here and then as we get closer to the end of it we'll have the hand or the arm lifting up higher we need that vibration Now other side. Okay. And the places where it's really stuck, just go slower and go deeper. This part is a really important part for us to open up because when our chest muscles are tight, it makes our body round forward. So keep going, but it makes our body, so imagine that this is tight, it's gonna make us round forward. And when you think about this being tight and compressed, it's gonna be pulling on your trap muscles and making them lengthened and stressed and hurting. And that's gonna send a lot of tension to the back of your neck and that will cause migraine so we definitely want to focus on getting our chest open so even if you just do just throughout the day like I literally will do things like this so that's just a little little homework for you to just open up your chest <laughs> and so now we're going to address our pec minor and so you can do this um, like this so your pec minor is like deep in here kind of like under your armpit and so you're just going to take your fingers and go up under not like aggressively but you're just gonna lift it up and then find where it's tender or sore and gently get in there but then just do like circles little gentle circles Obviously, having nails here is gonna be a little uncomfortable, so you might wanna trim your nails. <laughs> you can even get up under here. You just, you find, you find the spots that are tender and dense for you, and you can move your way up into this area and just mobilize this tissue. And so if you'll notice, I have my arm externally rotated as I'm doing this. So I'm not like that. I'm making it go like that. And I'm making sure my shoulder is back. 
And then, did we do this side already? I can't remember. No, we didn't. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get up under, get into your peg minor. I'm just getting, just getting in here. And you can feel around and feel for the dense spots and then massage it a little bit. This is the only bad thing, like a lot of massage therapists won't even address your pec minor unless you ask them to. I mean, obviously they some do, but I know that I've been to a lot of different um, practitioners and they tend to just shy away from it um, unless you like ask them and be like, hey, like I'm, <laughs> you know, cause it's, I mean, cause it's, I mean, it's right. And for the woman, it's, it's literally under your breast. So that can make them feel awkward or might even make you feel awkward, but you know, we're all just here to heal, so, you know? Okay, and we can kind of move up the line a little bit and we adjust here. You'll be able to feel this little like nook right here. You kind of just want to try to just get up under that a little bit. Mobilize that tissue. Okay. Now we're going to work on releasing our platysma a little bit. So we're going to take our hand and just do this type of motion, kind of just pre-tensioning the tissue down and find a spot where you can feel the pull and then tongue is on the upper palate of your mouth and we're going to just tilt our head but keeping this pressure you can even use two hands and sit up straight sideways and if you want to increase well let's actually save that for later the tongue is pressing hard on the upper palate right now not hard but it's just there make sure you're not doing this it's not gonna do anything make sure you're up straight like there's a string Touch the top of your head and you're just being lifted. Okay, now let's do the other side. So pretension. And then rotate your head. And find that good stretch. Don't need to go like too far back, but enough to really feel that stretch. Now let's just do a little stretch here. So take your hand and do a little pretension right here. And then the other hand on the back of the neck. And then make, put your head back for like making a double chin. And we're just going to rotate our head and put it down a little bit and breathe. And then other side. So pretension right here. And then the back of the neck.
You can think about sending your elbow to the other side of the room just to help open all this up. Okay, and relax. To help release some of the jaw tension that we can have like underneath here, which can, you know, everything's connected. We are going to do some tongue stretching, okay? So I'm gonna start by uh, sticking your tongue out like you're trying to like touch your phone or your computer screen like really, really far. Like it, like you should really feel an intense stretch. So focus on like that, the tip of it really going out like We're gonna take it to the other side. You should feel like a stretch, like a diagonal stretch over here. So out and then. Make sure your head is back. We're not doing it forward. Okay, <laughs> and you can do that as much as you want. Um, for me, when I first started doing the, the tongue stretching thing, I would actually pre-tension my tissue down like this. And you can do this too, but uh, what can I tilt back and... It is an extremely uh, intense stretch. So, you know, do what you can handle with it and do it often because as you do it often, it you know becomes less intense. But, and now let's do circles on the back of our skull. So like, It's like you should feel like these mountains, like these little balls on the back of your head. You just wanna do circles. And now we're going to like right underneath where we were. Sorry, my hair, my hair's in the way. But right here on the neck, we're going to take the tissue and spread it apart. Like Spread it apart. Like you're trying to remove the muscle from the neck. Now we're gonna address if you have like a neck hump. If you have a neck hump, we gotta, we gotta work on that because that's that's making your posture bad and it's just something that needs to be addressed. And so uh, right here where the hump would be, so right here, if you have it or if you don't, just get it and pinch it and just shred it. And if you have, if you have the uh, neck bump, spend some extra time here And you really want to do this like every day if you do have it. And when you do it, you want to think about your chest coming kind of forward because you don't want it to be sinking. You want to have your chest open. Okay, let's 
slide it down. Now we're just going to do this again. Today we're kind of working more on our front line to help since we worked so much on our back of the neck last time and our trap muscles and now we want to we help to get this front line open. And so if you have the balls that I uh, told you to order, this is a good place to use it. You can take the spiky ball and you can just really get in and help to break up some of these adhesions. And if you don't have the balls yet, just keep mobilizing your tissue like this. Just keep doing like that. But if you have it, you might as well use it. You can use two hands. Really dig in. We're just really gonna help break up the adhesions that we can get in our chest muscles. Little hard to reach areas, I know it's hard, but you can just, just sink into it and then breathe. And mobilize it. A little tight right there so whenever I find like like this this is a really hard to reach spot so I will find the spot that is you know tender or dense I'll get the ball there and like I'll get my arm strong like in a good position and then I will use this hand as leverage and then use them both to just like push into the the knot that I'm feeling and just stay in one spot and as you get deeper you'll be able to feel it releasing a bit and you can kind of try to mobilize it you can even just move your body to mobilize it a bit and then we can take the other ball and we can like roll this If you don't have the ball, you could just do this thing right here, okay? And then let's just do a little gentle massage of our sternocleidomastoid. I'm just putting my hand, make sure your head's back behind it, and then just massaging it. And then I'm gonna go to the top of it and just kind of compress it a little bit and just like pinching it a little and just mobilizing it, massaging it, not being aggressive, but using firm fingers. You know, it's like you wanna get the actual muscle. You don't wanna get the skin, get the muscle. It's ropey muscle. Compress it and then you can kind of do like this. And 
And then I'm gonna take it at the top and then have my fingers close to where I have it and then I'm gonna slowly pull it apart. And we just do it again and again. a little massage back here behind it okay then let's go ahead and do the other side uh what did we do we did this we did this so i'm just getting kind of on one either side of it and massaging it like this Okay, and now let's go ahead and grab it from the top and we're just going to massage it to kind of get up here. I'm like kind of pulling or pretensioning it down over here and then just doing deep circles, just getting in really deep. You can even like tilt your head a bit. Just make your way down it. Now I'm just getting in and then spreading it. Getting in. Just a little calming massage right back here. Okay, and just a little bit behind the ears here. Just right behind the ears. So I'm going like. You find that you find that tense spot and then just really strong fingers and just mobilize it and massage it. Not like this. Like this. Not like this. Like this. And then to finish we will address our masseter. So, masseter right here. If you bite down, you can feel it. So, I like to hook my finger kind of underneath my jaw and then take my finger and do this type of motion so I can get into the muscle deeper. You're going to open your mouth and then slowly, you know, tilt your head into your finger. I'm using a desk, so like I have a lot of helps to add pressure, then open your mouth, and then go down.
slow, slow, slow mouth open. That makes it where you can go deeper. A lot of pressure, this muscle is so strong. And then other side. So we're not doing it here. We're doing it. It's closer to the, I mean, again, bite down, bite, put your fingers here, bite, and you'll feel it. And it's this muscle right here. It's the muscle that connects the jaw hinges. So you do this to kind of help give your fingers some leverage. Open your mouth. Uh, Go oh, down. No. You have to go slow. It's really good to use a table to put your elbow on. In a couple days, we'll be doing intraoral work where we will be working on the masseter from the inside of the mouth. So make sure you get some uh, gloves, either that I linked on the intro page. I think it's, on, it's in the description here as well. Uh, or just go to CVS and get some rubber gloves. You can do it with your bare hands too, but if you have nails at all, it's definitely more pleasant to have gloves on. And more sanitary. <sighs> and at the bottom, I'll kind of just do this to help it release. Okay. All right, and that's it. For, that's it for today.